If I were a member of the audience and hearing this music for the first time, I think what I would be listening for would be, first of all, the, uh, the interplay between soloist and orchestra. That's what a concerto is all about. And you're going to hear that in just about any concerto that you go to hear. Um, Boccherini's concertos are very conventional that way. There's an orchestral introduction where he introduces main thematic material and then the soloist enters, comes on stage, here folks look at me, this is what I can do with this material, and uh, proceeds to develop the material with a lot of uh, virtuoso display. Um, being Italian and no doubt having been exposed to a lot of opera in the 18th century, he wrote um, very vocal music, I mean singable. It's stuff you walk out whistling. It's great that way. Um, it's extremely singable, operatic music. And um, he usually wrote in uh, the conventional three movement form, meaning fast movement, slow movement, fast movement. And in the slow movement, uh, he was very good uh, in most of his slow movements, in fact, in writing these very Italianate long breathed phrases where you feel you're just, uh, well, speaking for myself, I always feel like I'm lounging on an Italian beach with a drink in my hand, with the blue Mediterranean in front of me and some sailboats going by. And there's this beautiful slow music and uh, it just evokes for me the, the beauty of an Italian summer at the seaside. And his last movements, typically tend to be uh, what are called rondos, which are, uh, it's a, a rondo is a simple musical form where the same idea keeps recurring with little episodes in between. And um, so I would listen for that as well. So you have a first movement where you've got a lot of different themes that are introduced by the orchestra, developed by the soloist, uh, a slow movement which is given over to uh, development of a, of a beautiful melodic idea, very in very leisurely fashion. And a last very quick uh, rondo where you have a simple melodic idea that's reintroduced several times with different episodes sort of in between. And uh, at some point in each of these movements, uh, typically for a concerto, the orchestra grinds to a halt on what musicians call a 6-4 chord. And the soloist is given a minute or two for deliciously empty virtuoso display, <laughs> uh, following which the orchestra comes in, wraps things up. And that's usually how it works. So that's what I would listen for as a member of the audience.